So here's here's what I'm gonna try. Uh, I'm going to try turning on vertical sync, which will I think reduce my frame rate, but it might fix the problem. Like I said, okay, here I'll turn off multi sampling because I don't really need that anyway, and I will turn on V sync, and here's what I hope. I I hope this will fix my issue. So uh, I'll be right back. We'll see. Okay, I'm back. So uh, I turned on VSync and I turned off multi sampling, and we'll see if that we'll see if that helps. I don't know why it would, but I noticed that whenever there is a hitch with the cutscenes, there is a little bit of screen tearing. So we'll we'll see if those two things are related. Seriously, he looks like a Bond villain. <laughs> uh oh well. Well, let's go help Kira clear their name, then. What do you got for me, Sully? Well, thanks, buddy. I really appreciate it. Okay. So now, now we can make uh, combo weapons. Now that we have the, uh, now that we have the uh, door to the maintenance keys. Holy shit! <laughs> now that we have the keys to the maintenance doors. Oh my god! <laughs> How did I do that? <laughs> oh man! The human mind is a very strange thing. Bat. Nails. Table. Hell yeah. That is the face of a man who has a million ingenious ideas. Before we do that, though, hey, look, it's a collectible. Prestige point stickers. They're teeny, teeny, tiny little thingies that uh, show up around, around the city. I think there is, there is an ungodly amount of these, uh, and I am going to find, I'm going to say literally none. I, like, with collectibles in some video games, sometimes I say, okay, I might find a couple or whatever. I don't think I'm going to find a single one of these, <laughs> so sorry. But you might have noticed that the little prestige point marker at the top of the camera screen uh, went up when I was aiming at it, and uh, that's how you're supposed to find them. Let us make some uh, unholy combination of weapons, shall we? That works. Hell yeah, it works. Nail bat. <laughs> so the nail bat, along with one other weapon is the poster weapon for this game. It's, uh, you'll see it in a lot of the promotional material. What's up? Hey, Frank, looks like one of those looters has set up a pawn shop inside Moe's Imaginations. He might have something worthwhile in there. Well, we'll have to stop by there, won't we? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna drink this to get it out of my inventory, just to show you what it does. Check it out! It's a lot harder for zombies to grab us, and, uh, they do very much less damage. So, uh, painkiller, very useful. You can already tell. You can already tell that uh, combo weapons are very much useful. The doors are tacky. They're useful and they get you a lot of uh, a lot of uh, prestige points. Of course, they they have. Some of them have reduced durability from their non-combined uh, counterparts, but the game definitely does a lot to make them feel worth using anyway. And you can see, because I'm almost level 20 now, the uh, 
bar has quite a quite a reduced speed with filling up, but that's okay. Because uh, we're believe me, rescuing survivors gets you more than enough. And hey, look, this is exactly where I wanted to go. So I am, I'm glad this is on the way. And uh, you might have noticed that the drink wore off pretty quickly. That uh, that's that's kind of unavoidable. I think there's a magazine. I think there's a magazine that makes drinks last a little longer. There, there's magazines for almost everything. Okay, so this is basically the hub for making mixed drinks. There is a, a little bit of everything here, but we're we're gonna take a couple of a couple of wines. We're gonna make us a quick step. And you know what? I think I'm actually gonna make one more for the road. Because the, the painkiller is useful, but only only situationally. Whereas the quick step is useful in uh, a number of a number of uh, more varied situations. Although I think I have room for both. Oh yeah, I do. Okay, cool. Well, I'll just carry those around with me then. Hey, Bill. B Bill. Bill? Let me just <laughs> nudge your barricade back up with my ankles. Hey, Bill. How's it going? What a dick. Ow. Oh, fine. <sighs> Fuck you, Bill. So that's why I was picking up that money earlier, because I kinda need it. But hey look. Now I can celebrate. <laughs> come on, come on, Bill. Let's get out of here. Unfortunately, I cannot give Bill a quick step to make him run faster. So he'll, uh, he'll just be running around at his own pace. He's kind of an old man, so, you know, it's a little... He's, he's a little on the slow side. Believe it or not, celebrating actually does have its uses, but not not so much in the normal difficulty. It's mostly for survival, or for sandbox, rather. What the hell? Oh. Damn it. Back inside we go. Oh, or not. What way does it want me to go to get there? That's weird. Man, the guide arrow really sucks. <laughs> the guide arrow wanted me to go all the way around down the strip, and uh, I don't... I don't think that's such a good idea. I believe the lockboxes are in this, uh, or in uh, the Americana, but I don't have access to them right now. I don't think. I'll have to look it up between videos, because I don't think the game ever tells you where the safes are. Come along, Bill. And you can see if the survivor is going to follow you by the little uh, the little door icon by their, their picture. See, look, that that was a much shorter trip. Quick, follow me. Yelling at, yelling at survivors doesn't get them to follow you faster, but it makes me feel better. <laughs> I 
I think if you if you uh, take a picture of a survivor, you get drama. Yeah. So if you if you really want to squeeze your uh, prestige points, you can take pictures of survivors together. And that'll get you quite a bit. So we got quite a bit of time before a live on location starts. So we're we're just gonna run around for a little bit. After we drop off build, of course. You did right. Bill, you are an asshole. I regret saving you. So we're gonna we're gonna run around the safe house real quick after I save, cause uh, there's some there's some fun stuff in here. You get to check up on your survivors, see how they're doing. You, you can't talk to them or anything, but they will be. Oh, they will be here. Which I think is cool. I like that they don't just like disappear from the universe. Thanks, Lashandra. You, I didn't. You, you kind of weirded me out a little bit. Just kind of got the the crazy eyes. So there's bunch of different storage rooms. Some of them have food in them. Most of them have nothing. Some of them have uh, stuff like combo weapons, uh, basic uh, materials. It's a very big place. And I don't actually know... I've never actually explored this whole area. I'm just going to one specific place where I know there is some some fun stuff. There's some slot machines over here, if you want to try and rack up some cash. Okay, let's... why don't we not do that? Gambling is for chumps! Oh, jeez. Did she just teleport? I think that lady might have been a ghost or something. So, uh, up here we can go to the roof, and we can hang out up here for a little bit. There's a gun up here, some other stuff. <laughs> you might be, uh, you might be a little upset with me if you've played this game <laughs> when you see why I'm going up here. <laughs> because if we go behind the elevator, there's a Zombrex just sitting here. <laughs> There is a Zombrex, there's a bunch of mines, there's a, a gun, a couple of combo weapon materials. Fun stuff. I don't think there's anything over there on the other end. It's just a, it's a good way to get a view of the city, you know. I'll show you. You know, we can just hang out up here. Get a behind the scenes look at Fortune City. It's like in uh it's like that picture of the haunted mansion at Disney World, where it's like a picture of the haunted mansion from the front and then from above where you'd never see it, it's just a big giant fucking warehouse. <laughs> it's exactly like that. You're never gonna go on the hell when was the last time you went to the helipad on a casino? If you've gone to the helipad on a casino, please feel free to leave a comment. <laughs> I've actually been to Vegas. I, I went to... Obviously, Fortune City is modeled after the the, the Las Vegas kind of inner city. Uh, I've actually been to Vegas. I went there for... Uh, my aunt got married there. And it was, it was very interesting. Vegas is... Uh, it's very different than... It... it it's interesting. Like, when you look at movies and television and even video games, you, you see places and you think, oh, well, that's not that. That's not like that in real life. But what I found interesting about about Las Vegas is that it pretty much is how it is in real life uh, in movies and TV and stuff. It, it's loud, colorful. Uh, there's always something to do. Uh, probably lots of illegal stuff happens there, I would say. 
But uh, it's a very interesting place. If you ever, if you're, if you are interested in human psychology, and uh, you ever get a chance to go to Vegas, I really recommend it because it it will show you a lot about how advertising and uh, and uh, advertising and business marketing can really affect your judgment. Because I'm sure you probably have heard this before. Uh, inside casinos and inside stores uh, and retail outlets, they intentionally don't put clocks on the walls so that uh, if you're not looking at your phone or your watch, uh, you won't know what time it is uh, to encourage you to basically mentally lose track of time and uh, therefore spend more time gambling. And the, the fascinating thing about that is that it actually works. Which, which I find to be very, very interesting. Like, if you ask someone what time it is, they will look at their watch or their phone. But if you don't ask someone what time it is, ever, it will leave their mind. Like, they'll stop consciously thinking about it until what time it is becomes important to them. Uh, at which point, the amount of time that has passed since the last time they looked at a clock will stop mattering. Which is really interesting and and Las Vegas is full of that stuff like the the buildings block the buildings are designed so that uh, the windows don't face where the Sun rises and sets so that you don't know what time it is when you're inside the casinos and I, I find that to be very interesting and like I said it's it's the same kind of thing where uh, it's the same kind of thing as the the haunted mansion where if you look at a Vegas hotel from above, it will just look like a building. But if you look at it from the front, it will look like a uh, extravagant, lavish, decorated, uh, almost artwork-like, almost a piece of living artwork with with people and lights and sounds. So let's let's check out Mo's imaginations. Hey, buddy. It's the quadruplet. Okay, let's do it. So now we have access to the Moe's Imagination shops around uh, Fortune City and uh, we can buy stuff from the looters that tried to kill us. Like, we can buy combo weapons, fucking sick axes. What up, Stacy? I see two guys in Shank's knife shop at the Palisades Mall. Better hurry, I don't know how long they can hold out. Okay. Uh, fountain lizards. And oh, hey, a Zombrex. I will take that. Here's your stuff, ready to go. Thank you. And look, uh, if we want, we can buy more, but I don't need more right now. We can buy the soldier's goggles if we have two million fucking dollars. And before you ask, yes, they do nothing. The goggles do nothing. So let's see. Uh, we got a lot of time before Welcome to the Family starts running out, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of this while I'm here. Because, you know, as much as I do enjoy rescuing survivors, the plot missions are substantially more important. So yeah, if you ever, if you can't find any Zombrex around the game world, uh, you can always go to one of the pawn shops and buy it for ever-increasing amounts of money. But why would you do that? It's a waste of cash. Looks like you're a zombie chow now. You need 
to pay attention out here, buddy. Um, thanks. Rebecca Chang, Channel 6 Action News. Frank West. Oh, I know you. You used to be a kind of a hero of mine before you got washed up. You homesick for zombies? What are you doing here? Hey, I came to help with your story. I think Cure's being set up. My exclusive tape says otherwise, and I don't exactly need your help. It doesn't have to be a contest, lady. I help you, you help me. Simple. Where'd you get that tape from, darling? Reporters don't reveal their sources, Frank. Not real ones, anyway. I wouldn't underestimate Frank West, sweetheart. I got some pictures you might be interested in. Okay, let's see what you got. Not so fast. You gotta throw the old dog a bone before he does any tricks. Okay, maybe I'll let you tag along for a while. That's more like it. I can't tell you my source, but there is a central security room. There'll be footage of everything that happened there. I can show you where it is. Well, you show me yours, I show you mine. Where's your crew? Mm. They ran off with all the equipment. I guess they just didn't want it bad enough. I enjoy when they put the didgeridoos in the musical track. I don't know, I don't know why. I just think the didgeridoos are really funny. <laughs> okay, so, Rebecca Chang is, of course, a character from Dead Rising 2. Uh, I mean, it's, if you've played the basic Dead Rising 2, but not this game, something you might notice is that the characters are all very similar, which I really think is cool. I think that's awesome. The, the characters are all very similar in personality, but the way they interact with Frank and the way he interacts with them is very different than how, uh, than how Chuck interacts with them, which changes the dynamic between the characters, which, which I think is really cool. So where'd you learn those skills? Okay. So... Something you might notice, something you may have noticed in that cutscene, and something you might notice later on is that Frank is a bit of a pervert. <laughs> Which I think is great. <laughs> uh, well, we don't have anything to do around here. Let's go. I'm following you. Oh, I almost walked right over a key. Heh. <laughs> So occasionally the game will do this, where uh, we are following Rebecca Chang around instead of her, uh, instead of her following us. Very interesting. Thanks. <laughs> uh, I'll make sure to, I'll make sure to take care of business in here. It's the No More Heroes style of saving. I just realized. This game is very similar to No More Heroes in that uh, to save you, take a shit. <laughs> no. Alright, already. My sword is poking through your stomach. That's fine. I mean, the zombies don't need guts, why would she? Duh. <laughs> You might notice that zombies will occasionally randomly fall from the sky. <laughs> that, that happens sometimes. So yeah, when, uh, when you are following a survivor around, they, uh, it's, it's kind of like they just have a waypoint set. Like, unless a zombie is directly in their way, they will make a real sprint for it. Oh, nice. 
Oh, hello. Eat it. Oh, right in the junk. That was rude, Frank. That was very rude. Thought I heard another guy. I guess I get out of his range, though. Oh, there he is. Hey, buddy. Ah, oh, jeez. So if they if they spray you with that gas, you'll get stunned. Well, I guess it's paint. Uh, I'm gonna drop this bat. Now, you know what? I think it's time to say goodbye to the sword. Now I'm gonna pick up this money hacker. Because this is going to come in extremely useful later. Not right now, but... Uh, definitely gonna find a use for it at some point. survive out here on your own. Just push the button, lady. I hope I don't have to do everything for you. Well, what are you waiting for? Just admiring your skills. These two have a very professional working relationship, I gotta say. So, Rebecca Chang is a big dummy, and instead of just walking over this way, she's gonna run right through that crowd of zombies. I don't- I think that might be an AI thing. She just, like, always does that, and I don't know why. But she actually didn't do it too bad this time. Lots of, uh... Lots of terror is reality workers here. Can I shut this? Well, not with me inside. There we go. Okay. You got it, sweetheart. I'm gonna have to break it down. Here, let me try. Didn't teach me that in journalism school. <laughs> you went to journalism school? <laughs> Could have fooled me. Oh, that's such a sick burn! <laughs> what a mess. Well, this just gets better and better. Wow, looks like somebody didn't like the show much. You should get this on video. They didn't want us to see what really went down. Frank, check this out. Huh. Zombies don't use guns. I'm not so sure Kira's not involved. But it definitely proves someone's covering up what really happened. Not a bad lead, kiddo. Now it's time to show me those pictures, Frank. Frank, you need to get back to the bunker now. What is it, Stacy? It's Sullivan. He saw the report. Can you get back here? He's threatening to kick me out. I'm on my way. Wait, who is that? Just a friend. Stacy, the leader of Cure. Gotta go. He can't ditch me for long. Okay, so that did not fix the stuttering problem. Damn it. Oh well. Sorry. I'll, between recording sessions, I'll look for a, a more permanent solution. So great, Rebecca Chang is being nosy. <laughs> <laughs> 